Kevin? No. It's Iowa. All right, Ben, so this is how a podcast works, right? You got a microphone, you plug the microphone into the computer, oh you hit record, you let it record, beautiful. and then I love you, the you listen to it afterwards, you edit it, you go through and change Life the uh, the volume, you fade in, you fade out, you add different features, lovely, you have noise cancellation, I think uh, you mix it, normalize it, you, uh, you know, there's all these different life. mechanical scientific theories oh. on how you do a podcast. It's science versus art as we talk the Fablemans on the Pod of Dreams. Movies are dreams. That you never forget. Sammy? to change how everything looks it's hard to find our house ours is the dark house with no lights in this family it's the scientists versus the artists sammy's on my team takes after me what he does it's playful or imaginative you could afford to be a little encouraging she should have been the concert piano player what she got in her heart is what you got you can't just love something you also have to take care of it it's more important than your hobby can you stop calling it a hobby mom got a monkey why'd you get a monkey because i needed a laugh always have to be the center of attention. Stop shouting at her! That has been nothing but disrespect from you! I'm your mother! Family, art, <laughs> it'll tear you in two. You stop making movies, it'll break your mother's heart. I don't know what to do anymore. You do what your heart says you have to. was your favorite part okay welcome everybody to the pot of dreams if you listen we will pod ben and eric here uh we are done with our favorite movies we're just jumping back to our old format of picking random ass movies and talking about them uh i picked the fablemans this week and the reason i picked it was we're getting close to the academy awards i think when you listen to this it'll be close to the oscar ceremony and The Fable Mins is nominated for Best Picture, and I wanted to check it out and see what I thought. So, yeah, that's that's what we're doing here today, Ben. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't get to see a lot of movies because life is filled with little kids and getting out of the house is difficult. So I was happy to have an excuse to watch Spielberg's latest as well. Um, I don't think it was at the very top of my want to watch this, but it was on there for sure. So I'm Why excited. is that? It's just the... You know, I, I, I have to say, there's this wave of movies that has come out in the last year, year and a half, where it's like the famed director makes a movie about why they like movies. It's like a whole genre that's come out. And I know a lot of it has to do with, like, COVID and, like, people thinking you, the end of I'm the world is coming. I'm not disagreeing with you, Eric. Can you give me some examples? I am not challenging uh, you. James Gray made a movie called Armageddon Time, okay. which is, like, about... You know, his childhood. Uh, Sam Mendes made a movie called Empire of Light, which is mm-hmm. like why he likes movies, why he goes to the movies. Um, I'm just trying to think. that There there are several other ones that have come out recently um, where they're sort of biopics. Um, I, is The Irishman, does The Irishman kind of fall under that category? Maybe not. Um I don't know. It, it, this this Fableman's is definitely that. It's it, oh sure. The weird thing about it is it's like basically a biopic of Steven Spielberg. I know he like changed the names, and I don't think all of it's 100 percent accurate. But um, 
I don't know. It's just it's a genre of movie that's just you know picked up in the last few years. So were you asking me why it was on my want to watch list, or are you asking why it wasn't higher? Why why isn't it higher? It's Spielberg. It's you know uh, his life story. Like why isn't this? And it, this movie didn't do very well. I mean, it didn't do well in the theaters. It's not. I don't think it's going to win Best Picture. Like it's going to be forgotten in his his like catalog of movies. Oh well, that's already kind of a dead giveaway. Don't you think? Your... Sure. Uh, no, I, sure. I, I really liked it. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I wasn't. I mean, I, I think this is part of some of the, my issues, especially early on. Is I don't think I found Spielberg, Spielberg's childhood and why he loves movies all that interesting. And I don't think it's all that interesting of of a narrative. Like somebody finds their way to movies and they get really into them. That that's not interesting to me. Like. And whatever the Licor- shots of licorice pizza is another like it's kind of his childhood, right? I mean, it's kind of like okay. Um, I, I yeah, that's just not a super exciting thing. I mean, I, whenever I think of movies where we see like a character, even if it's like a fictional character, watching a movie and getting really excited about movies, that's not usually very interesting to me. Um, I'd rather just like watch the movie that the characters are watching, which is you know a movie, and it isn't like oh boy, gee, aren't aren't movies great? Look at how transformative that, that doesn't, isn't, I don't think super interesting to most people. Uh, maybe hardcore film nerds. I don't really know. I mean, certainly this isn't Spielberg is past his prime. That's not really a, an unfair thing to say. Um, this feels like a movie that's probably more fun for Spielberg to direct than it is for audiences to watch. Uh, especially early on, I was like, man, I'm really way less interested in Spielberg's childhood than uh, he is. I was like, man, I am just not interested like, I'm not mad. It's not poorly made. That's weird. I think I should probably like it more because I think Paul Dano's great. I think Michelle Williams is great. Um, the kids did a pretty excellent job. There's no, I don't think there's any bad performances save maybe Seth Rogen. And even then, I don't, I don't think that's the performance's fault. I think oh, he's I, just. I, I, the, the worst part of this movie are Dano and Michelle Williams, I think. I think they are both like almost bad. Like, oh. Almost like legit bad. They're so sappy and sent. I mean, this movie's sappy and sentimental already, but like, well, that's true. They lay it on in a way that, like, I, honestly, I found like kind of off-putting. I don't know. So you really like the movie, but you think the two leads, uh, other than Spielberg himself, the no, two the characters we see the kid. most. The lead right. is the kid. I just said other than the kid, yeah. the two characters we see the most. You found them almost just. It sounds like you didn't like any of their scenes together. No, I, I didn't. I really didn't. I, and that's a lot of scenes. I get Spielberg uh-huh. has more scenes for himself, but that's a lot of scenes in a movie you think is really good. Uh, that's I mean, interesting. The movie's two two and a half hours long. It's way too long, and I think that there's too much of his parents in it, and that's that's the problem I have with the movie. Like, I mean, it's it's really coming off like I hated this movie. I I really yeah, enjoyed, I'm, I'm seeing so what did you I, like about I'm it? I'm a kid who made movies as a kid. Like we used to, we had we got a camcorder one year for Christmas, and we would make these stupid. Can I see any of these Peter and I, Eric Lane? I don't joints? know. They, they may exist on. Well, they existed on the camcorder tapes, and then we would transfer them to VHSs. Some of them we transferred. Some of them got taped over. If you find them, I will pay to transfer them to a DVD or digitize them um, or whatever. But we made like, like, like I said, like monster. We made like martial arts fight. We made like a crow ripoff movie. Like we made all. Oh my sorts. gosh, that sounds so edgy. Yeah. Oh, it, no, bro. it was terrible. These are terrible movies. Like, but see, is, so I think what you're suggesting is maybe the scenes where he's making movies. I absolutely love. Are it. the best parts of the movie, which yes. is true. A thousand we percent. And like the tech of like how he figured out how to do the, the gun blast on the on the Western movie, like by putting a pu- punching a hole in the film so it flashes, like awesome. Like that was so cool. Like I yeah, really so love that part of it. Seeing how movies are made and seeing the process make movies is way more interesting and fun to watch than a character. Especially for movie. like a kid with his friends, like how he did it and like how he did it in a cool way and was like really good at it. Well, obviously, yeah, he's Spielberg. He was really, you know, you, you see him directing and giving the kid acting advice about the war movie he's shooting and how difficult, well, especially like back John then. John Williams is scoring his little home movies too, which is also pretty cool. That's like a cool little touch to it. Sure, and I like seeing how difficult it was to make movies. I mean, this was, it's not. It's pretty easy, really, to make a movie. Nowadays, you and I could shoot a movie. Like it would, ed- I don't edit- think it'd be good. The, the editing that he had to go through, like literally cut the film and there's yeah glue free it editing together. software. Yeah. yeah, he had to put them in make tabs and keep track and stay super organized. 
and make sure everything splice together. All that stuff is great. And it's it's one of those things that I like in just about any movie. So I don't know if you've ever seen this movie. It's not a good movie. I'm not really recommending it, but Be Kind, Rewind. Did you ever see that movie, Eric? Is that Jack Black? Is he Jack in that? Black yeah, and yeah. Danny most, Glover's most in it. Deaf or something like that. Is he in that too? Yeah, Moss Dev yeah. is in it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, that's a movie that's mostly bad. It's about like a movie sort of goes out of business or... And they make the, tape. like, tapes or something they like make, that. They yeah. make versions of the actual movies yeah. to, like, yeah. replace the ones that they erased or whatever. I don't remember yeah. how it happens. So they do, like, a Ghostbusters movie. Yep. And those are the sweet, fun parts, is those sequences where they shot that. Everything else was just kind of totally boring and dull. But, oh, seeing them try to recreate their favorite movies, um, very little. But that's really entertaining. And I've got a friend who, him and his brothers, they made a Lord of the Rings like they tried to recreate Lord of the Rings. It's just three like brothers. Scene for scene. Well, no, they had yeah. to make editorial decisions. Right. Eric. They didn't get everything. Um, it wasn't like a nine-hour-long epic. But one of the brothers was like a Gimli, and one the youngest brother was an orc, and he was every orc that was killed was the youngest brother. Oh yeah, and it was wonderful. They just we, kept killing him. We would do like him. we would do like oh. bad guys. We're fighting bad guys, and one friend would leave the camera and come back around and like put a hat on, and then it's the same guy. Oh, that's we did the exact same thing. Yeah, and, and you just the the horrible overacting and the silliness. But like where, where he kills the friends, they all run and then lay down so the camera. Well, that's turns a clever over. way of doing because he times yeah. it, he coordinates it, yeah, it was, and it makes it look like there's more people than is actually right, there. It's brilliant. He's yeah. a genius. My my friends. My friend didn't do that, obviously. They would just show the one guy dying, and then there'd just be another scene where he's an orc, and then he dies the weird in a thing, different way. When we did it, was like we never had someone who was like the director, or we never sure. had somebody who like wrote, wrote scripts. Like th- that was the you know we're just like dumb fourth fifth graders. You know what I mean? Like we had no idea what we we're doing, but like to have the like wherewithal to like have no, I'm the director of the movie, and I'm gonna tell people where to go and what to do, and like that obviously makes for a better movie than just a bunch of kids running around being stupid. Well, obviously he's a, you know, a genius filmmaker. So he, everybody recognizes that pretty early on. Like, Oh, not his, not his fucking dad. That oh, dad a, thinks he's good. He just doesn't think there's money what, in it. He doesn't what think an it's, absolute, like terrible take. If you're Spielberg's dad and you're like, Hey, how about you stop this movie thing? Like, why don't you okay, try that's something? That's in else? hindsight. I mean, how many that's kids have gone out? That's dude. That's like Michael Jordan's dad being like, you sure you want to play basketball? Michael Jordan didn't play basketball until he was a, like in high school. No, um, he did. He just didn't make his varsity team his freshman year. That's. Oh, okay. Well, that's because he sucks. Overrated. I, whatever. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't think it's that crazy for a father in like the late 50s and 60s to be like, that. that yeah, that's After absurd. having seen the shit that he made, and you any dad would be like, this is awesome. Like, unless you're a bad dad. I doubt dad. that's the case. I think there's a lot of famous people. And well, clearly in Spielberg's case, it actually happened. I think there's a lot of people this. There's not a career in it. There are probably a lot of people who want to be directors and were encouraged and they, they fail, flamed out. I mean, I, I, yeah, his dad didn't recognize that. Okay. He's one of the best directors of the, you know, next, whatever you're going to say, the block is it's, from it's 1970, honestly, next me, 60 years. Or almost whatever. implausible to like, think, that you would watch that and have your kid do all this and be like, no, why don't you not do that? And like, why don't you edit this thing for your mom? Like, cause she needs it. Like don't, don't make a movie with your friends, even though you had like 40 people ready and sets all figured out. And you're like a, you know, you're upset that he wanted his son to make a movie yeah, for his that mom. That really pissed me off. Yeah. That's so bizarre. I, I really don't think you like this movie. Um, I, I, it seemed in line with who Paul Dano's character was. He's concrete. He doesn't have any room for art and abstraction. And it's movies are fun, but they're silly novelties. The I don't know. I really didn't Jesus like his Christ. character. Yeah. This guy that helped define like build computers. It's a is that really? Is that really? That, that was I don't know. Question about well, was, know how much of this was true. Yeah, how much of this was true? I had that question the whole time I was watching. I, sure. I mean, I was gonna Google it, and then I just didn't. Um, but I mean, if his dad was like one of the preeminent computer people. Um, I don't know. Cause he did, was, he, he did move to Phoenix. I know that that's like part of ET, right? Like that's the other kind of cool thing is like a lot of the stuff with him as a kid, you could see in his movies later on, you know, I found that kind of interesting. The divorce, I mean, I, all that, you know, and the family splitting apart. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that was probably true. I don't know. I'm trying to, I mean, well, and is... that, the, the other, you mentioned Seth Rogen, like, 
that his character, the whole movie, I was like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Like, uh, yeah, he's just I, like there all the time. He's just as he's like, is that his brother? And then I was like, no, it's not his brother. It's just their friends. And they work together. I was like, what is happening? This guy's just like at their family dinners and they're all the time and then like moves with him. And then his wife's mad that she didn't he didn't get him a job. I was like, what is happening? I mean, obviously well, you learned that they had a relationship. But that, like, yeah, that, that seemed pretty obvious from the get go. Like, uh, this is a, a very weird relationship. But and, then didn't Michelle Williams even say, like, it, we, I never let it get that far, like, where they would do anything other than hold hands or something? Well, she said, all she says, the line we get is, I, you know, um, I don't think it ever got as far as you imagined it did. Right. Which is vague. What does that mean? They never. They probably didn't fucked. have actual intercourse. Uh, you know, the, the penis probably didn't go in the vagina, well, if I I'm, guess. If I'm that kid, is like, is Seth Rogen my dad? Like, what's going on here? Like... Well, I, I mean, the relationship it, was weird, but I, I mean, universe, I thought Seth Rogen's... Hold on a second. Okay. In what In what universe in reality would that be the case where they never fucked? That's that's an impossibility. That that this guy hung around, and she's obviously in love with him, and not Paul Dano, but they didn't have sex. That's crazy. That would be insane, right? No? Am I wrong about that? Well, did it really happen? That's I mean, that's the thing. I, I assume that that's not made up. That, you know, there's this family friend that was very close to him and his family that turned out to be like Mary's mom after his mom and dad got divorced. Um, I assume that that's true, Eric. Obviously, it looks weird. Like, But then they, yeah. they fucked the whole time then. There's no way. Okay, that's fine. You well, you can disagree. You can think Spielberg's delusional. I don't really care. That's not very interesting to me. I just found Seth Rogen's character super annoying. It's like he's the classic guy who's supposedly funny and is never funny. Like everything he says is oh, just not, not funny to me. Big Seth Rogen guy, huh? No, not Seth Rogen as an actor. I'm oh. talking about the character he played in this movie. Oh, here. I thought he was My charming. Goodness. He added a lot of charm to the movie. I oh, thought. I found him grating. I didn't think he was funny the, even the, slightly. The, keyboard, the, the fingernails on the keyboard when I was watching that, I was like, holy shit, you can hear her fingernails. I was like, what What a cool detail that he put that in there. And then after a second, I was like, that's actually kind of annoying, you're hearing her fingernails on the on the keys. And then Seth Rogen makes this big joke about hearing her fingernails. I don't know. I thought it was And good. then he's silly, and they capture her, and they force her to – Get her fingernails trimmed. Oh, my guy's so silly. It's so silly. Such a silly. He sings silly songs. He does silly stuff. He swings people on trees. He's so silly. What a silly, funny guy. And I find him grating. I was like, man, I, I didn't laugh once at anything he said or did. I was like, oh. okay. He was like to me like Joey, Uncle Joey on Full House. Like, Who didn't love was, Uncle Joey? As a four-year-old or whatever, when it's, that show came on, I loved it. And then I'm like, this guy is at best corny, at worst just profoundly unfunny like would you really watch full house like, laugh at anything uncle joey no, did no, not now as an adult? I... well that to me he, that's my whole point like i i i aged out of the adult acting silly is therefore funny phase of my life that's over um i'm an adult that acts silly sometimes so i act silly too but i don't expect other adults to laugh at it um i don't think it's going to be entertaining i act silly for my kids mostly or to annoy friends and so who is he. despise silliness <laughs> that's fine but i'm not a kid i'm not the target audience i'm not the fableman's children are you gonna act silly on your podcast is that happening never once i take this deathly seriously um so it's interesting and so you you <laughs> you're mad you're mad at steven spielberg's dad for not encouraging him enough to become a director that's really funny no i'm well yes but i'm saying it's like an all-time miss it's an all-time dad miss Sure, to, he was, he if was your wrong. kid is fucking Steven Spielberg and you're trying to Steven Spielberg and you're trying to tell him to not make movies, that's an all time that's a parenting fail of of epic proportions. Like what if he what if he listened to his goddamn dad never made movies? He'd never have Jurassic Park. Like or E. T. or Close Encounters, like re, like you you would have you would think have, of all the great movies that didn't get made because they're shitty fathers, people told him not to make movies and they never sure, made them. That could be true, yeah. But you know, we have an example of one where his dad tried to make him not try to tell him not to do it, and we almost lost out on all this great stuff. I, I don't know that we were that close to losing out. I think he was always going to make movies, even if he said he'd given it up, he was going to go back to it. I, I'm not convinced that his father really would have impacted him at all to not um, 
watch movies or to make movies, but that's fine. I, to me, he's he's wrong, and he's it can be an all-time blunder, but he's wrong in a way that's obvious that a lot of parents would be wrong. A lot of people parents would be like, I think you should do. I mean, they're like comedians who make a shitload of money, and their parents will still be like, I, you know, you, you could go to law school. Quentin I mean, Tarantino. Like his his mom didn't want him to keep writing. She was like, quit doing this writing stuff. It's stupid. It's, I mean, it's just it's it's an obvious. It's not a shock to me that that he would think this is just like a silly thing. To the point where I think Quentin Tarantino has never given his mom money, like ever. Okay. I heard That's somewhere fine. that like he because yeah, all the money he made writing, she told him he he should stop doing it, so he hasn't given her any money. Okay, whatever. I mean, that's fine. That's that's psychotic, but well, okay. Well, yeah, I, artists are also kind of deeply insecure people sometimes, and they uh, what drives them there? There's some some deep rooted stuff that drives people to do this kind of stuff. Um, but whatever. I I just I mean, I, it's obvious it's wrong. He t- tried to keep us from having Spielberg. What a jerk! What an idiot! But. He's wrong in a way that a lot of parents would be wrong. I don't think it's that shocking. To you, it's obvious how talented he is and that he was going to go on to be a very successful director, and his dad should have known it, what if that he'd be a great director. What if your and kid made a lot was of- like, hey, Dad, look look at what I did and showed you that fucking movie. Wouldn't you just be like beyond blown away and impressed and proud? Yeah, but I, I'm also not Paul Dano's character. I'm not yeah, you're not an I'm, asshole. You're not a asshole. But there are a lot of parents asshole. that are like that. I would say, hey, uh, you can try to make movies – Great. Have a backup plan. It might not work out. I mean, you got to work hard. You probably need a little bit of luck. Oh, so you're on the defense there. You're going to tell your kids to not not go for it. Hedge. No, I said I settle. He- always hedge. Hedging is just a smart thing to do generally. So, so what would you say? Your daughter you know, wants to be direct movies. Do it. Don't do anything else. Just focus on that goal. Screw everything Let's else. Let's move to I Hollywood. Let's go today. You're going to go with them. Hell yeah. You're going to move to Hollywood? Uh, and your whole family's moving? Yeah. The other daughter's moving too? I'm going to take the monkey with me. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't be, like, disappointed. I wouldn't say we should if do something If my daughter else. was like, I want to try to be an actor, I would say, okay, let's, for the summer, let's move out and see if you can get a part, go to auditions, and let's try it. And what if she didn't get it? And then you say, move on, or let's go every 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 summer for the next 20 years? That's yeah. what you're doing? Uh-huh. Okay. So she's going to be, you know, in her 30s and you're going to be taking her to auditions yep. and like, OK, yep. that gets creepy and weird and codependent. At some point, you got to be like, hey, you're trying this. Good luck. Well, at that point, out. you do it. You know, if she's be older than 18, then she moves out to L.A. and does it herself as an adult. OK. And if she just keeps needing money to live in L.A., you're going to keep giving her money. It's like, Dad, uh-huh. you're just going to here you go. Never yep. ends. Yep. Here you go. It's going to happen someday for you, baby. And then she'll be a big star and she'll buy me a house. And I'll be like, okay. see, I and, told and you. And if she just lives in very expensive L.A. and you just fund her life for a decade and she never gets any parts this or any This is a very anymore. weird scenario. My kid's nine years old. Like, I, I like. Well, you asked me. You started this conversation, bub. Like, what would you do if your kid said they wanted to be a director? I said, great, go for it. I mean, have some alternatives. Figure it out. No, I'm I'm big on being a supportive parent, and he was a terrible parent and not supportive at all, and it frustrated me. No, that's fine. I I, I think it's a it's a pretty standard parent. You need to do something concrete that's reliable and safe and secure and real. And he thinks movies are fans. Well, I think it was even though he for... takes th- that's the other part that didn't make sense to me is he takes his kid to the movies right that we see it in the beginning of this like mind blown by the train thing. Have you seen that movie by the way? The the oh, I've seen yes, the greatest show on earth, the greatest best picture earth. winner of 1952. Okay. Yes, I've seen it. A crazy tra- that train crash was like, whoa, holy crap! I didn't expect that. Anyways, but so he knows that like movies are a huge thing, right? There's hundreds of people in the theater. They're all wearing suits watching this thing. Is like sure. it's that is like a real thing, and people are showing up and paying money. It's a business. You can make money doing it. Like to not realize like, well, I may- maybe this should just be the like. The science of it, too, that he didn't realize there was so much in building the equipment and doing the, like, the same thing he's doing with his computers is the same thing Spielberg was doing. It was just he was making movies at the same time. It just seemed weird that he didn't make that connection, that, like, there's schools to be experts in computers. Like, you can go to college, which Spielberg did, right? Didn't he go to, like, USC or UCLA or something like that? Yeah, one of those, like, yeah. Lived with his dad for a little while and then dropped out, yeah. Um I mean, that's, it's fine. I, I, you can hate Paul Dano's character as much as you like. I, I don't care. I, 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 maybe, maybe what we're learning is I'm not the giant Paul Dano guy. 
because I didn't love him in There Will Be Blood. That was my biggest complaint about that. Oh, see. Uh, uh, maybe I'm just not, not in the Paul Dano bandwagon. Perhaps. I mean, I, I thought he was very good in this and movie. I, but that, Michelle the original, Williams like, is, characters... she's in Venom, right? And that movie's awful, and she's awful in that. Maybe I'm not just, maybe I think both of them are not very good actors. Maybe. I mean, I, <laughs> judging her for Venom, in which I'm sure what, she was What is Michelle like, Williams good in? Like, name a movie. Not a movie that you're going to like. She's not going to be in any uh, What's that? I think Blue Valentine is, she's great in, but you're not going to like her in it. She plays a lot of sad characters who are crying and upset the, and not enjoying life. Uh, Manchester by the Sea, is yeah, that? Yeah, I've not yeah. seen it, but I think that's probably a very she's depressing pretty, movie. She's pretty, I mean, she's good in that, but it, that, is, that is one of the most depressing movies I have ever see, seen. See, I think she's good in this movie. I don't know that I like her character, but there's a difference, right? You're pissed off at Paul Dano, but he's reading what's in the script. Um, yeah, but how he does it, there's this, like... The, He's kinda, the, he has to be a bit of a jerk and a bit of a douche. That's what know. the script calls for. You think he, you think he slipped that by Spielberg? Spielberg no, no. didn't want it's that just, performance out of him? Name a Paul Dano performance where he isn't like that. He's always like that. Always like what? He's kind of a dick. He's kind of a jerk. He's smug and like kind of off-putting and just annoying. I don't think he's off-putting in Little Miss Sunshine. Um and but some of that's just the kind of roles he's getting. He's supposed to be off putting in There Will Be Blood. He's supposed to be off putting in the Batman movie as the villain. Um, he's supposed to be off putting in Looper. Uh, these are characters. Yeah, that are supposed Looper's to be off- another example. He's such an annoying piece of shit in that movie. He's he's not off putting in Love and Mercy, the Brian Wilson movie. I don't think. Maybe I've never you seen that. I've never. He seen plays that. a young Brian Wilson, and he's very likable. Um, I've heard that's a good movie. I, I've never seen that. But you're you're kind of judging him for these roles where he's supposed to play guys who are obnoxious and unlikable. Yeah, well, maybe I'm wrong, but maybe I have to rethink. I, well, I think now. he's a good actor. I I don't know. It's weird that you're projecting a lot of stuff on the characters onto him as a person. That's weird to me. I don't really get that. Um, and if he's playing people who's, I mean, he's his. Character isn't supposed to be like, well, he takes Steven well, Spielberg what I'm to the saying movies, is, I don't think and he I describes like... how movies works. Oh, it's a series of images. He just explain, explains the persistence of motion, and this is what it's working, and it's flickering this light, and he describes it. Um, and he's even impressed after the first movie, but he doesn't take away that movies are great. He's like, oh, I looked at my son's organizational skills, his leadership skills, how he had to plan and like lead this whole situation, and he had to have foresight and set goals. That's what I value, and I think is really, really great. And not, oh, you created this magic. But that's what being a director is. Like, why would you not then push him towards that? But he wants those skills directed towards something more concrete. But it doesn't matter. I'm like not, what? Like making IBMs? Sure, making computers or making some other things or some other corporate leadership. Or it's fine. His character's wrong. His character's supposed to be wrong. Obviously, yeah, why are Spielberg's, you defending him? I don't. Know. This is so weird. We're having a twenty-minute debate about you defending. I, I just Paul don't think Dano. he's wrong in a way. Well, I, I don't think it's Paul Dano's fault that the father is wrong. I don't think it's that. I don't know why you're so upset that his father is wrong. I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. I'm well. Wrong. Uh, okay. Boo hoo. At the ending Take of the movie, can we, can we spoil it? Talk about the ending of the movie, the last Shh, last sure. scene. That go. I really liked it. The the John Ford. Uh, David Lynch as John Ford. I really liked it. I thought it was great. Um, I loved the the speech he gave him about the horizons. You know, it, what's that picture? And, oh, I don't know. It's a bunch of soldiers. You no, know, where's the horizon? It's at the top. And then look at the other one. What's going on here? Oh no, see they're looking this way. No, where's the horizon? It's at the bottom. And he's like, horizon at the bottom's interesting. Horizon at the top's interesting. Horizon in the middle's boring. Now get the fuck out of my office. Well, like, I loved it. It's great. Great way to end the movie. Sure. Uh, I've heard some people don't like it and have criticized it a bit, but. Oh, well, I have no idea how accurate it is. I don't know if that's really happened to him when he was in Hollywood in the mid '60s. Um, but it was a nice wrap. I actually, I actually watched the Man Who Shot Liberty Valance because of that scene. Oh, I'm well, I'm very happy. I love the Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Did you find it old and boring and dumb? Uh, it it was a oh. little boring and it's definitely old, but I I really I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, I don't no, I, like I don't it. love John Wayne that much, but um, I love the whole aspect of you know bringing law to the West. Like I thought that was really interesting. Sure, that's and that's what as a, lot a former of John law Ford, man myself, you know, that's a lot of John Ford movies are about the the so-called taming of the West yeah. and bringing civilization to an uncivil place. But uh, 
I liked it. I don't think I, I don't I don't think I hated it or loved it. It was like, oh, it's kind of cute. Oh, he's coming in. He's got a bunch of lipstick on his face, and his receptionist or whatever has to come in and wipe the lipstick off of his face, and he's just kind of a jerk to this like nineteen year old kid. That's fine. It was sweet. But is uh, there has there ever been like a a biopic about a filmmaker, like a movie director? Made by the movie or director, like it's it's it got to be a one and one. That's that's the caveat that I yeah. I yeah I have no idea. I mean, there was the Chaplin movie, and Charlie Chaplin was the director of Charlie that's Chaplin true. movies, but he didn't direct that. Right. That was like somebody else. Um, so yeah, and if I scratch my head, we could probably find um some movies. Maybe I mean, there's like documentaries, certainly documentaries oh, course, about well, making of films and stuff no this is very very weird and it it is oddly self-aggrandizing um and i guess that makes it slightly off-putting like you're already steven spielberg we already know you're amazing and then you just talk about how you were always amazing and i guess that how films helped you cope with reality and process reality okay yeah i mean the the kid figure that the sammy character who i mean is my favorite part is that character like I, i love that kid he was great but like He's also like perfect, you know what I mean? Like he's doing everything he can. He's keeping his family together. I mean, he's he's a little bit self. There's a little bit about that. Is he being selfish? His sister kind of says that to him that he's as selfish as their mom is. But like he's also just like, you know, he's like Marty McFly in this movie. He's just like a cool kid who just wants to make movies with his friends. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he was likable enough in the performance. It was fine. Um, I don't know. Guys. So can we can we talk about the other parent? Can we talk about Michelle Williams? She didn't like sure. her performance either. She's supportive, so good for her. She didn't discourage him from well, making movies. She was a psychotic parent, though. Taking your kids to drive towards a tornado is like, that's lunacy. You should lose your children for doing something like that. Like, literally, they call social services, because that is crazy okay but like she's a, she's a terrible parent like that's an awful parenting so wh- who's the worst parent then I telling your son that, who's steven spielberg to not direct movies well or she, support, she supported him uh i guess you know she put them in danger which i think is what spielberg was trying to say is like his mom could be dangerous what if they what if steven spielberg got killed in the tornado because his mom have. drove into tornado and then you don't get jaws or Jurassic Park either. Um, okay. Yeah, I just didn't find her particularly likable. Um, no. I, again, I don't think this is Michelle Williams' fault. This is where I was, it was less defending the character who is, I mean, she's also not funny and likable, and she's dancing in, uh, when they go camping in Phoenix somewhere, and she's dancing by the headlights. With, and with like, Seth this Rogen is... just hanging out with them. <laughs> just like nobody, like, that, none of the kids were like, Dad... What's with what's with this guy? Like, why is he out? No other families have this other guy hanging out. Like, he's not your brother. He's not her brother. Like, why is he always here? Nobody asked him that. He never asked himself. Paul Dano was never like, honey, what's the deal? What's going on with you and him? That never came up. So I mean, I weird. Think we, he's just a pushover. I mean, we, we hear from Michelle Williams that he just wants her to be happy, so... Having this guy around, he's always known kind it's of... Like, it's like Biff. Biff was just always at their house. Like, did, did well, Biff George... was at least like a bully and coerced his way. I mean, this is with Paul Dano's consent, at least, of not out-and-out out encouragement. Yeah, it's a weird relationship. Yeah, he was getting him jobs. He was getting him jobs and taking him with to, like, other... Well, he knew, like, all right, if I... Like, my wife's going to be miserable if I don't get him a job. I'm going to have to fight my wife. She's going to... It's going to suck. My Why is his suck. wife miserable? Because... Seth Rogen's not there to bang her, so she's lonely and like you know, it's so weird. Like I'm just she has to, to be with this guy who's uh, apparently a genius and also really cold and emotionless and has no pe- no tolerance for anything that's flighty or superficial, including movies, uh, Eric. And so that's really hard because everybody tells her how great her husband is, but then he doesn't like anything about her, but he wants her to be happy, but he also doesn't value the thing she values. I don't know. The relationship's weird. I don't really didn't really care about it either. It was did like, his, I understand. Did his dad like lose his job? Because in the end, he's in some tiny little apartment with his dad. Like, what's the story there? Um, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if he just didn't want a whole house because the kids were gonna just live in Phoenix. I assumed, 
and he's just going to take the apartment or her. He has an apartment plus the house. The apartment's like a middle spot so that Steven Spielberg can go to uh, school. I don't know. I mean, I don't know exactly. I don't. I don't think he lost his job, but I guess you could. Uh, well, I just are they were they trying to say like ultimately his dad ended up being like kind of a failure after everything, you know? I, see, I didn't. I didn't get that vibe at all. I thought there was just some. It's a choice reason. to have him be in this tiny apartment and not some mansion. Well, somewhere. he he did that for his wife. His wife moved back to Phoenix and they live in a house somewhere. And maybe he still has that house that they moved to. And so builds, he's or maybe pay- he hold on, hold on a second. We time out. So he's, he's definitely paying he's for the paying house. Paying his wife. To oh, live with alimony. Seth Rogen? Oh, I'm sure he's pay- he was paying alimony. You, you wow. think he wasn't? Can you, you think um, he wasn't paying spousal no, support? No, he probably was, but at some point you got to calculate Seth Rogen once they got married. Once they got married, he doesn't have to pay alimony anymore. Once she gets married to another man, he has no sure. alimony obligations. Sure. But you think he's still paying? Still paying? He's I paying think, her and he, Seth Rogen to live together. I, it hadn't out. been that long. I don't know if they had gotten wow. married at that point. I have no idea, but I, I, I didn't get the impression. All-time cuck Paul Dano is in this movie. He's an all-time cuckold. This is what well, we're doesn't that make you happy? <laughs> no. That bums me out, man. I, uh, as just a man, that bums me out. That, okay. Well, yeah. he His wife loses it. I mean, we even talked about how she buys a monkey. Oh, goodness. Like, that's, that's so insane. Is that a thing you could just get? In yeah, like where do you get a monkey? L.A. Yeah, just buy one. Did they have them at? Pets I think she stores? said at the zoo. She got it from the zoo. So she just went to the zoo and said, "I'll buy a monkey." Yeah. And like, well, Any monkeys okay, for sale? okay, white lady, sure. Anything <laughs> for you. Um, that's so bizarre. The monkey's just jumping around. I mean, he is a cuck, though. I mean, that's the thing. Like, he doesn't even st- stand his ground with the monkey. He's not even like, "We're getting rid of this monkey." Can you, let Let's say, Eric, you have to go into the office for work and you come back. And your wife has purchased a monkey. <laughs> Are you just going to say, name, okay. And name it off after the guy that she used to sleep with. <laughs> Are you just going to be like, all right, that's fine, honey. I'll roll with this new life no. going, buying monkey food. That's You're going to have a lot of fighting. Sanity. You're going to have yes. a lot of tension in your marriage. It's going to be very tense. It's so crazy. Like, it's, it's just bonkers that that's in this movie. Yeah. And he takes it, and she says, like, even when she snaps at him and says, like, go mess with the antenna, he does it. Yeah, she gets mad at him. Yeah, all the time. Crazy. And and I guess it sucks that he tried to deprive us of Spielberg, the filmmaker, but he... You're making me like this movie less now, now that we're talking about it. You said the only thing that you've been really, you kind, you pretty, you really like the ending... And you like the scenes where Spielberg's making movies. That's like that's the whole movie, though. That I mean, isn't the whole movie. It's like seventy percent of the movie. The ending of the movie is like uh, three or four minutes long, where he meets John Ford, and then the scenes where he's shooting a movie—that's probably like fifteen minutes. No, of I mean the time. stuff is him as a kid. All of the stuff is Spielberg. Anything as with a kid. him as a kid. Yeah. Okay. A lot of I, first of all, him as a little kid, it didn't didn't no, the, register for the me at all. The little kid was kind of cool. I mean, he, how he made the train thing was kind of cool. I well, like sure, that. I get it. Oh, he's he's recreating stuff. He's gaining a sense of control. Oh, this is why he's got fathers missing from all of his movies, right? This is why there's like absentee parents all the time yeah. or whatever. Fine, I, I I kind of figured that. I mean, I've seen quite a few Spielberg movies in my life. It's a it's sort of a running theme, but fine. Um. And the stuff in high school is sort of whatever. I mean, so it works. Although the scene, like, I the don't even know what. high school stuff. To... Yeah. It, see, but yeah, you're not, you don't love it. You're like, it's, it's yeah. okay. There's some stuff that's okay, but it's. Also... We didn't need a bully. We didn't need a bully situation in this movie. Just didn't. But need I'm it. sure that really happened. He's trying Could to work be. through. Yeah. I, you know, there's some psychotic guy, and we also get the power of film. Like, he ultimately convinces that guy at the end. Uh, by making him look like a superstar in the yearbook or in the, you know, end of year video. Um, but even then, like the the relationship with the soup, the very, very bizarre Christian. Yeah. What did what were you thinking when that scene happened? I was baffled. Just why? Yeah. I'm like, this is I'm so confused by this. Is it supposed to be funny? I guess if it actually happened, it actually happened. But I'm. I'm so confused by her sexual attraction to Jesus. I it was so baffling to me that the whole maybe that's a thing. I don't know. 
Well, maybe, but it was still baffling to me. You see her room, and they pray, and it's so bizarre. And I was like, man, I don't know what to make of this even slightly. I am so flummoxed by this whole situation. Um, because even then, scenes where, I mean, the kids not dealing with family drama are, I mean, it's a lot of him dealing with family drama or high school drama. Um, we get some of the movie making stuff, which is great. I guess even the train stuff is okay. You know, like he's just trying to recreate the train and seeing him as a little kid making movies. Okay, that that's fun. Yeah, I think, the- I think there's like a 90 minute, like really, really, really good movie in this like two and a half hour movie. <laughs> which is just him making movies like here's Spielberg making movies from his childhood. What, what's the narrative? You know thread? what I thought? You know what I thought? Actually, I had the, had this thought is if. If it was like a, a peanut situation where you never saw the parents and they just went wah 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 and you just it was just the kid and okay. his life I think that's a better movie. <laughs> that movie is your version is never getting made. Steven Spiel I, why would he want to make a movie where he ignores this like foundational event from his life? Well, it's like um, we get it. His mom's the artist, his dad's a scientist, they fought. Like, okay, we get it. Like we don't need, you know, two hours of that. You know like, like the scene where he showed his mom? She made it possible for him to film the train, right? She was always supportive. And then in that same closet where they watched the train footage, he showed the footage where he's like, I know about you and Benny. No, that was, I didn't. No, I didn't like that, that at all. That was, see, that was the moment where like Michelle Williams sold me on the role, even if I didn't like her character. Because if you see, she gets in the closet. How, how, again, how does she not know that people know? That, that's, that is, the, it's so implausible. Like, she's like, wait, you think other people might know that there's something going It's like, yeah, bitch, you have been hanging out with this guy for 20 years. You talked about how she has some mental health problems, right? She drives her kids to the tornado. She has all these problems. She thought she was getting away with it, Eric. She was wrong. She thought she was getting away with it. That, that uh, is be- that that's scene, implausible. The re- the, this is the moment she sold me exactly on the performance. She's, the, the clip starts to play, and it's footage of camping. And at first, she's got this like slight smile on her face. She's like, oh, I love watching his movies, and this camping trip was fun. And then it just keeps cutting to Seth Rogen and her. And then it, you see it dawn on her face, and she's like, she, her face switches, and she it drops. The color goes strange from her face, and she starts to, oh, God, like realize and cries and is upset and understands that he knows now. Um I mean, it, it's. I'm sure there are kids that have caught their parents cheating, right? Like that's. Of course. I'm, and I think that's what he's trying to show is like that. What What does that do to a kid who finds out like, oh my god, that I is. Out he's my explaining why cheating. he's so upset, and he can't say with words. He has to say it through but movie, through it, film. It, in a situation where like you you know you came home from school one day and your parent was cheating, and you're like, who is this guy? Like, what's going on? Like. That's different than this guy who is literally always at their house for for Christmases and gatherings and moved when you moved. Like, why would you ever be shocked that your mom was cheating on this guy? Like, yeah, mom, we all knew you. This dude is with. You know, I don't know. This. I think whatever. I, I I can provide a little bit of empathy uh, that you you think is implausible because you would have a similar situation. But I think it, it would not be. Especially when he didn't actually see them having sex and it was just through editing the film footage when he started piecing together. I don't think you would assume that your parent is having an extramarital affair when you're 15 or 16 or in the 60s. But if that's completely implausible to you, add another strike against this movie and a strike against Spielberg's childhood if if that's what actually happened. That's what's funny to me is all this stuff I think actually happened. So you can think people are stupid or wrong, but... Clearly, you know. Well, he he didn't write the movie. Tony Kushner did. The guy that wrote Lincoln and. But he told his life story to Tony Kushner. Yeah, but does he embellish things or change the story to make it more interesting and more cinematic? Maybe, but you also could be saying this is ridiculous. Everybody would know. I can't believe she'd be surprised. What if she was surprised, Eric? Does that brain? Does that change anything in your brain? That it's possible. It makes me think even less of her and all of his family. That. Okay. That this was some revelation. Speaking of family, what about? Um, her uncle, the guy who's, I mean, he's in Independence Day and a bunch of stuff. Yeah, another in. unnecessary scene, you know. <laughs> it features the son, but you didn't like it. You didn't like the weird. I mean, I, it was, it was, tape. I think it showed, a, you know, about like, so we were talking about the art thing about do you commit to it? Do you give everything you have to it? Uh, do you drive your kid to Los Angeles and have him go to auditions over, over and over again? 
even if it does destroy the rest of your life, you know, that kind of idea of giving everything you have to it. Or can you have a family and, and also make art? I don't know. It was kind of interesting. I, I didn't, I guess I didn't hate that part. But you didn't love it either. It's just, it was just there. It just happened. It's a bit much. I don't know. That was kind of part of the movie where it's like, when is this ever going to end? This is just okay. a dragon. <laughs> I, see, again, I, I give it four stars. You said stars. a lot of bad things about this movie. I'll give it four stars. I give it four stars. That's hilarious. I mean, I guess we're jumping into... Uh, yeah. So funny. I give this one three stars. I I was most happy when I saw filmmaking Steven Spielberg. Um, and then... I mean, got, that's the thing we're not... Is like, he's amazing at making movies. That's also the course. piece we're not talking about. Is like, Steven Spielberg is, like, the greatest ever at... They're just like staging things and showing you things and, and filming things. Like there's really nobody better than him, I don't think. So that's a big part of it for me is like this is the greatest guy to ever make movies about him starting to make movies. Like how can oh, I sure. not love that? Well, I I mean, I, from my point of view, I, I liked it, but I didn't love it. It's just, it's just the honest answer. I mean, I did keep thinking like, especially in the high school scenes, like, oh, in like a decade, this dweeb's going to direct Jaws. Good Lord. That's crazy. I, like oh man i can't imagine like he was just at some point just a high school kid that was just i mean is it? it was just a high school kid living his life being bullied like it's just crazy before he became the greatest director ever or whatever it was just that 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 part's mind-blowing but it it wasn't as interesting to me as just him making a movie about something else and putting a little bits of his life or feelings into the narrative it's like hey okay it's fine I love the scenes where you're making movies. I like some of the stuff, but the art versus science, this tension between loving and respecting your family and using them for art or ignoring them or having a personal life or how much you... Okay. We know how it turned out. It turned out well for filmmaking. I, I assume Spielberg's had a happy life. Maybe he's been miserable. I don't know. Maybe he's only happy when he's making movies. I don't know. But it was like... I was really kind of bored for the first act. I was like, I really didn't care about him as a little kid. Like, okay, you went to a movie and and you had to cope with it. You started making movies and it helped you process reality. You got really into movies and you fixated on them and you really understood how to do them. Cool. And then your parents have this very bizarre relationship, which if I were, if I had to deal with that, that'd be complicated. If I were a teenager and I had like, if my mom's side piece lived with us, basically, yeah, that'd be a, that that would mess with my head, Eric. I would have a hard time coping with that. That would be a weird thing to grasp. Um, but it wasn't interesting to me to watch. I didn't, yeah, enjoy spending time with the characters. Really, um, I defended Paul Dano and his character somewhat, but I didn't really enjoy spending time with them. I wasn't like, man, give me more Paul Dano, give me more Michelle Williams. It's like, ah, uh, you know. I didn't didn't care about his personal drama, you know. I guess if I'm supposed to like it more, okay, but hmm. it was just like, yeah. It's All fine. right, well, okay. So, best picture nominees, we got Fablemans, Top sure. Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, Elvis, Women Talking, Tar, Everything Every Everywhere All at Once, All Quiet on the Western Front, Banshees of Inisherin, and Avatar: Way of Water. Those are the those are the best picture nominees. Okay. Um, I have That's- seen. All of them except for Triangle of Sadness and Women Talking. Did you finish Tar? I rewatched it, yes. Okay. Uh, any less boring <sighs> on a second viewing when you're not drinking and hanging out with your brother? It's, it's it's much better than... Don't watch that movie at 1 in the morning when you've been drinking all day, is is piece of advice. Uh, okay. Didn't love it, other, uh, uh, aside from that. It, I thought it was there was a few things kind of interesting. Um, okay. Okay. My favorite of all of them, the one that I would vote for best picture, and again, I haven't seen the two others, is All Quiet on the Western Front. That would be my pick for best picture. I, I really liked that movie. But sure. if I was going to rank them, I'd probably put Top Gun second and this third in terms of my personal best picture Oscar rankings. <laughs> well, I want to say, so is it, there's nine total that have been nominated? Is that That's the total? Ten. I think it has to be ten. ten. Yeah. Oh, it has to be ten? I think it I is. Thought it was- the new rule okay. is it has to be 10. Now, see, there's always, the rules are always changing. Okay. Uh, so then I've only seen 40% of the nominees, so, so whatever. And I, I, I don't – I love the Oscars as an absurd event every year that I enjoy watching the nonsense, but 
I don't really care what gets ranked and nominated. Even though movies. you've watched every Best Picture winner. Well, I haven't seen Green Book. That's the only one I haven't seen. It's still weird. Did you watch Coda? One. Have you seen Coda? No, I haven't seen Coda. So yeah, Last year two winner. Okay. Yeah, there's two I haven't seen. But you other other than that, you've gone back and you sure. started from and, the beginning. And, and I'm grateful for the Best Picture winners. It helped branch me out and seeing different kinds of movies helped me watch old there's movies. There's some really bad Best Picture oh, winners, most right? most of them are pretty bad. I would say most Best Picture winners are at best decent, and a lot of them round out bad, especially older ones. Like, you didn't like Casablanca that much, and Casablanca is, for the first 20 years of the Oscars, it's easily the best Best Picture winner. And the one that holds up the most, like uh, of those, up until you get to the 60s and 70s, really, there's just not much. Maybe, maybe Bridge of the River Quiet with Ricky. That's 57. So that might speak to you. you. You seem to resonate. War movies seem to resonate with you. But my favorite, and this is, I'm sure this is probably at the bottom of your list because it's probably too weird. And you don't like it. Everything, everywhere, all at once is by far my favorite movie that came out last year. I, I love that you movie. Say that it was super well shot. It was funny. I laughed a bunch. It actually had heart. Um, the performances were great. I'm sure you didn't like the performances or thought it was no, too weird. they were fine. Awkward. I mean, Michelle, you was great. Like, I've, okay. I watched, like, a bunch of Jackie Chan movies growing up, and she's in a lot of those. Like, she's awesome. Michelle, you was great. Um, and it's so got that. the guy that played Short Round in Data. Like, how could I not love that? I just, I, I didn't love the movie that much. I don't know. There's, like, she's got, like, hot dog fingers. Like, what the fuck is that? See, like, that to me was so I, – I bust a gut when that came on. I don't find that funny at all. I know. It's too weird and nonsensical for you. Um, and it's not because and it's not because it's like child humor. It, it takes this concept. If there are all these alternate realities, there could be one where people have hot dog fingers, and you get to see cut-off versions. Why would you ever even think of that? Like, that's just insane. Eric, your brain is just so concrete and literal. I love you for it. It's great. But – some of us have weird brains that will. Okay, if literally there's a bunch of alternate you realities. You can think of any. It could be any reality, and you come with hot dog fingers. Like, and then we get to see 2001 what? recreated with hot dog fingers. My God, I lost it. That was one of the most absurdly hilarious, weird ideas I've seen in a long time. It was great. Um, having it was just great. I understand it didn't didn't work. Have you not it's seen Top Gun Maverick? I've seen Top Gun Maverick. Oh. I like it better than Fableman's. Um, yeah, I do too. It's probably uh, uh, it'd be number two on my of the four that I've seen. It's it's equally two. pretty sappy, but like it's amazing. Those beats land pretty well. It it, it hits all the storytelling oh. beats. I think in the exact right ratios. Yeah, the exact it's... right amounts. It doesn't do too much of any one thing. I, I actually, the action scenes are I great. actually like Top Gun more than All Quiet on the Western Front. I I think it's like I enjoy it more. But I if I was gonna vote for the winner of Best Picture, I would. Pickle. Sure, you think All Quiet on the West Front has more artistic merit, yeah. even if Top Gun Maverick was more entertaining. It's an anti-war too. war movie, like it's incredible. Yeah, no, I mean I saw the one that yeah. won Best Picture in 1930. I've seen it. Sure. Uh, I mean the filmmaking is, I'm sure, archaic and and dull, uh, but it's, it's the same concept. I'm I'm guessing, you know, people hyped to go to war. They had a bunch of propaganda, and it turns out war really sucks ass, especially yeah. trench warfare. is really really shitty and starving on the. Well, and a um, lot of it's like about the war pigs, the people behind, you know, of course. this all and how the, all who there. who actually benefits from it, and it's miserable. Um, but you know, like Paths of Glory is the best anti-war movie I've ever seen, and it that's mostly picture. like a courtroom drama, though. Like that's not really a war movie. Well, fine, you're saying it doesn't show enough action to count as a war movie. That's fine, I, whatever. It's the best anti-war movie, even if it's not a war movie. I don't, I don't care. It's the best anti-war movie. But anyway, that didn't win Best Picture. Uh, they get it wrong way more often. Neither will all is quiet, all quiet. I mean, I think everything, everywhere, all at once is going to win everything. Like, oh, you think that's going to win? Yeah, interesting. Oh, yeah. I haven't I, done any I, I research on, on the odds. Okay, I'd have to look. I and I don't know. I, I again, I will see. What's so going tar? To, is tar going to win? That tar's not going to win shit. What's Maverick? What are the odds? Top Gun Maverick's gonna win. The Top Gun Maverick won't win. Second, Avatar, Avatar: The Way of Water won't win. No, It'll, I well, hope Avatar: not. The Way of Water will win Best Visual Effects. I would bet money on that. Sure, and it should. Like, um, yeah. But um, no, it, that that won't win. See here, Elvis. Elvis. If I was gonna rank them, and I, I have, I love Elvis as a as a singer performer, huge fan. That was the one of the worst movies I have ever seen. Like Tom Hanks's accent, the the politic like the story of it is total bullshit and 
other than him singing as Elvis, like it's it's honestly like a laughably bad movie, I think. But that's my opinion on it. Okay. Well, all right. I mean, <laughs> I don't have a whole lot else. I, I just thought it'd be fun to have a little Oscar talk because this that's why I watched this. So we we had a little Oscar talk. It was it was good. A little uninformed Oscar talk. But. Well, it's fine. I, I was trying to pull Best Picture odds and. Uh, I'm on my work computer, so every single gambling website comes up as blocks, so I can't see the best picture odds. Um, you I can see. bet on the like FanDuel and stuff. I just oh sure, I yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It's it's a legal, bunch of websites but... like that. Yeah, Vegas Insiders. Um, I do think yeah, it looks like maybe everything everyone wants is one of the favorites, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so you would, uh, despite a lot of strong negative feelings created from watching the Fablemans, you would recommend what well, people watch the Fablemans. Yeah, Mans. well, if if you made movies as a kid. You'll like it. Like, with, I suppose that's that weird subset. Like, if I hadn't done that and I had no, like, emotional connection to that, I probably wouldn't like this movie very much. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's really like, it just reminded you of making movies with your brother as a kid. Yeah. And that yeah, was friends, a positive, yeah. good vibe. Sure. For sure. Okay. Yeah, it okay. touched me a little bit. Okay. That's interesting. I mean, I love those sequences, but, I mean, I, it's just, uh, I think it's fine. I think you'll have an okay time if you watch it. It's a movie like, most people can watch and probably not hate, although it is a little bit self-aggrandizing and a little bit, uh, look at how great Spielberg is. And I guess, yeah, look at how dumb his dad was. I don't know. But, it's also like very sappy. It's a very oh, it's sappy, sappy from yeah. the get go. I, I didn't laugh once. I don't think, um, other than, no, I laughed with the woman who is the young one who is sexually attracted to Jesus because I was just uncomfortable and confused. So I did laugh at that point. Like, what is going on here? My brain does not compute. Oh, but all right. So Eric, you want to take us through your five degrees of separation? Sure. Uh, I started with your favorite guy from this movie, Seth Rogen. You just loved okay. him. Loved Seth him so Rogen. Much. I like Seth Rogen. I, I, I don't know. I think he can be very funny. His best I think he was movie, funny in this role. Best movie, Pineapple Express, I think. I absolutely love Pineapple Express. Uh, Danny McBride is in that. Heard of He's him. He's in a movie called Tropic Thunder with Nick Nolte. And Nick Nolte's in a movie I've never seen called Three Fugitives with James Earl Jones, who's in Field of Dreams. Got Michelle Williams is in the Fablemans, much to your chagrin. She's also in Venom Two. You could do Venom One or Venom Two. I've not seen Venom Two. <laughs> I have seen Venom One, and I was actually I did that was the first. She gets she gets the Venom suit in Venom One, right? Doesn't Got she it. become Venom? Uh, for a minute to to find him, yes, she chases what, him down. What a what a anyway, trash movie. That, that's what I needed to unlock it. So Michelle Williams, um, she's in Blue Valentine with Ryan Gosling. So it's a very it's about a marriage in decline. One of those movies where you see a couple and their marriage disintegrates and there's a lot of screaming. She's and fighting. a lot of those. And I know. And those aren't your kind of movies. And I don't think you would you enjoy those kind of performances. I don't really enjoy them much either. Uh, Blue Valentine is good, but it's not a fun watch. I really, I understand something that I didn't understand before. It's like, okay, these are just two quality performance in a depressing movie. And Ryan Gosling's great in it too. But anyway, Ryan Gosling is in uh, Blade Runner 2049. Uh, a Killer movie. movie. You enjoy, yep. Yeah, love um, that movie. And Harrison Ford is in that movie, and Harrison Ford is in uh, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope with uh, James Earl Jones, who is in. You could have done Clear and Present Danger too. Harrison Ford's in that, and so is James Earl Jones. Is James Earl Jones in The Hunt for Red October also? I don't remember. Yeah, but Harrison Ford isn't. Oh, you're isn't. right. That's right. Okay. It isn't yeah? It's a different Jack Ryan, isn't it? Alec Baldwin isn't Alec Baldwin? That's right. Same character, right. Jack Ryan, but a different actor. Yes. I'm mixing up my. Uh, yeah, get your Jack Ryan's movies, right. Political Jesus. thrillers. Um, but yeah, all right. So it's wide open. Yeah, you pick what you pick the movie here, I'm, man. I'm excited. All right. I, could you be know, anything. Could be anything in the universe of films. Could be anything. We'll narrow it down. The first way we'll narrow it down. Clue number one. The year that this movie was released, 2013, Eric. A Ooh. decade ago. Ten year anniversary. You have it. We we eliminated a lot of movies. It's not well, Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown's not. It's not what? Jackie Brown. I know. I'm saying oh. it can't be Jackie Brown because it said 2013. Can't be Inglorious Bastards. So, okay. All right. Um, 
So the female, the, the co-female lead is played by two different actors. Huh? That's clue number two. The, 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 lead char- the lead character is played by two different female co-lead characters played they by play two different They play the same actors. character? Correct. Hmm. Is it like a different age thing? Huh. Uh, weird. Different timelines? Or <laughs> do, they, <laughs> do they have hot dog fingers too? But yeah, this is a. It turns out that everything ever all at once was released in 2013. So we're gonna talk about that. No, um, clue number three. The score was done by Arcade Fire. Hmm. I didn't and know that they did film score. In Minneapolis, once upon a time, there was an awesome show. Is that that's at after the suburbs, right? Yeah. No, or is that before suburbs? I think they had three albums. Well, so they had. Neon. Uh, what was what was the album after Neon Bible? Was it the Suburbs? I think so. Yeah. Then I think that album was out. Yes. Maybe oh. even the the one after that. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. No, I think yeah, it's just the one after Neon Bible in 2013. Anyway. So th- that's clue number three. All right. So the director of this movie. Um. Well. Uh. Let's see here. I want to be exactly right because I know if I get it wrong. This the, the director of this movie co-founded the youth culture magazine Dirt. Never heard of Dirt. You never heard of Dirt? Nope. Is the movie called Mud? <laughs> no, I've seen Mud. I think I think uh, it's movie. McConaughey, right? It's been on yes. my list of movies to watch. It's good. I think you'll the like Nichols, it. Nichols, uh, Jeff Nichols, or something like that, the filmmaker. I don't remember the director's this name. This is the guy that made uh, um, Midnight Express or something like that. Is that with Adam Driver, where the kid has like special powers? It's the same same director. Who, I think I think it's the same guy that made Mud. I don't, never mind. Not Mud. Just dirt. About, not Mud. Okay. Well, yeah, that's the name of the magazine. Um, does it help you? Okay, I'll give you one last clue. Um. All right, so this director has actually worked as an actor sporadically throughout his uh, career. He co-starred in Three Kings, and he appeared in a supporting role in Moneyball and The Wolf of Wall Street. Is it... Wolf of Wall Street and Moneyball. And an actor from Three Kings... Well, the director of this movie is the actor in those movies. Right, yeah, yeah. Got it, okay. So it's not Clooney, it's not Wal- Wahlberg, it's not Ice Cube. <laughs> no, he's not one of the literal three kings. Uh, but also I in Wolf of Wall Street and Moneyball. Jeez, who's in, who's in Moneyball and Wolf These of Wall Street? These are all small parts. I, mean, I know, like, I'm trying to think of, like, McConaughey's in... But he didn't direct any movies, so it's it's like an actor turned director. I have no idea. Completely lost. I should know this. Um, I tried to be more obscure this time. I think it kind of worked. Do you want me to just tell you the name of the movie? Yeah, yeah. It's it's her. Oh, Spike it, Jones, right? Yes, yes, that's right. That's the director. Uh, he does. There was, and I I could have gone a skateboard, more skateboarding route and stuff. To, it would have made it a little more obvious. But yes, he he is in Wolf of Wall Street. He's like when he goes to the penny stocks. He's in the penny stock place. Who is he in Moneyball? I don't even know. I don't remember. It's I saw that movie in the theater and haven't seen it since. Okay, I know you really love her, so this will be interesting. It, this movie I thought a lot about for my top five. Frankly, I'd only seen it the one time. But it's a movie I think about often, and then with the story about the reporter who, I don't know if you heard that, like Chat GPT, like no, there was a reporter where the he was talking to Chat GPT and it tried to get him to leave his wife, it kept telling him that he loved him and like you should leave your wife and be with me, and I want you to love me and I want to be real. And I was like, all right, you know. Oh wow. But Chat, I I got to talk about her. I haven't seen it. I couldn't put it on my list because I haven't seen it in a long time. It probably holds up, but I just was like, all right. Let's talk about it now. I'm I'm anxious to rewatch it. It's been a, it's been a decade since yeah. I've seen it. So, all right. So her her cool. Okay. cool, cool, cool. 
All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks, everybody.